So Kind has been around for a long time. I think you founded this, what, in 2004? 2004 was, Kind was launched. And, and mostly you've been doing bars. So talk about what drove this expansion into new categories now. So we've been in the bar and granola set, and for years we've been dreaming about taking the Kind promise of nutrient density into other categories, and now we're entering the freezer set. So four temperature states, shelf stable, freezer, refrigerator, and temperature controlled. You're going up against some huge CPG companies. Not all of them have been doing well, but Hershey, Mondelez, some of them have. Why do you feel that you have an edge? We're the only snack company in the world where 100% of our portfolio leads with nutrient density, with nutrient-dense whole ingredients. And we want to take that kind promise of wherever, you, when you're in the freezer, when you're in the refrigerator, wherever you want something that's nutrient-dense and delicious, you can find kind. What about sugar? Uh, everything we have has lower sugar than the competition. Uh, for example, our frozen bar, kind of the thing is less than two teaspoons of sugar, around 10 grams, only twice the sugar in our traditional nut bar. What are you seeing in the consumer right now that, that led you into these categories? Where are the habits moving? Yesterday I was uh, at a chess tournament for my daughter and every snack there was empty calories. And it's really frustrating for parents, for people that 50% of products lead with sugar in the consumer products good space. So we're trying to lead with nuts, with whole fruits, with whole grains. This is really important for health and I think that's our formula. Always need lead with helpful ingredients and then make them also tasty. Are you finding that you're getting better shelf placement, you know, in stores outside of, say, a Whole Foods type of uh, yeah. grocery store and even in a traditional supermarket, just more eye to eye level? Absolutely. There's a huge trend and recognition that we need to shift the nation's health towards more healthful products. And for years it's been happening, but it's being it's accelerating. Things that are truly helpful are getting more uh, appreciation. Things that have the halo get some appreciation, but where they're authentic and they're have brand trust, they're, they're gaining more traction. Daniel, I'm curious uh, about how you think about the capital position of the company. I would assume an effort like this requires a good deal of investment spending. You've obviously been thinking about it for quite some time or preparing for it. You're still a private company. How do you measure success and how far were you willing to go in terms of spending investment dollars? Actually, David, what's interesting about Kind is that since our inception, we've raised very little money to grow. It's always been bootstrapping, very, very humble, very down to earth in all of our operations. And this did not require a ton of resources. We do have an international partnership that required a lot of resources and Mars is our partner to help us grow globally. So we have a joint venture with them. We would not be able to do this without them. They're entering 32 markets thanks to this partnership. But relatively speaking, we've been working with co-manufacturers. We control the brand, we control the formulas, but it's not been that expensive for us. Why have you never been bought by a Mars or another major food company who, I mean, these companies have been desperate for growth and buying smaller brands? We love what we do. We love being private, and that's why we chose Mars as a partner, so we could have a very long-term view. And as long as we can continue growing in a sustainable, holistic, long-term way, we're going to try to not take a short-term approach. Where do you think we're headed with uh, some of your input costs? Um, almonds are a very tricky input. We buy about 2% of the world's almonds. Uh, there's a ton of work that's going into sustainability to make sure that the irrigation, drip Water irrigation is, is best in class. It's still a ton better than protein for animal sources or from dairy sources, but there's a lot of uh, fluidity in the space and we're trying to create very long, we're entering partnerships to try to think five, 10 years ahead in order to ensure supply availability. I'm guessing packaging costs have come down. Yeah? Um, so, so. Really? Yeah. Oh, any forecast for how that might shape up later this year? Um, in terms of overall yeah. supply chain, I, I, I no longer know precisely all the different inputs. There was a day when I was <laughs> doing the packaging and walking up and down the streets. you gave up the CEO role, what, last year? Or? I gave up the CEO role eight months ago or so. Mm -hmm. And Mike Barkley is an incredible CEO and partner. I'm still very involved in all the... Uh, long-term view and strategic things. We just acquired a company a few months ago and we're going to do more of that. But uh, it's really fun because when we started, I was literally walking up and down the streets door by door all the way down here to Wall Street starting at 7 a.m. on 122nd and Broadway and then walking door by door till I would get our products in there. So it's really You've got to get the shelf space. That's the key. But Daniel, I've known you for many years. You're an entrepreneur. It's interesting when I hear you say, well, you just want to keep growing. I mean, I would assume at some point there is some price at which you sell this company. Maybe it's been too high for anybody to be interested, but 
Do you really see yourself just continuing to grow the company as it is and perhaps taking it public one day as opposed to ever selling it? First of all, kindness is not just about making money. It's about inspiring kindness. And so our motto and our value proposition is do the kind thing for your body, for your taste buds, and for your world. So helpful ingredients that are tasty but are also inspiring kindness in one another. We have an initiative called Empatico to connect children across the world. And it's just so much fun. We're enjoying it so much. So um, and there's a lot of work in our nation that we need to do to bring people together, to discourage division and polarization. I'm doubling down on that this year, uh, both through my personal foundation and through KIND. We're trying to do a lot of bridge building because we're really scared. I mean, I'm a Mexican immigrant. I was born in Mexico. I don't take rule of law for granted. My father was a Holocaust survivor. So for me, rule of law, democracy, freedom, I don't take them for granted, and I think we all as Americans need to join forces to protect those values.